So before we get into the video, I thought it would be a good opportunity to give a shout out to Fabsy. If you don't know him, he is a British Army PTI. He has a fitness um, military channel. I'll link it in the description below. Um, without his support, encouragement, guidance, his posting on Instagram, um, I wouldn't have the channel. Um, he's been with me every step of the way. I think his channel is definitely a valuable tool for anyone joining the army. Um, it gives a truthful insight. He upholds military values and standards. Um, it's the best for his field, in my opinion. So um, I think it's important to give back to those that really um, serve our country. And perhaps he definitely does that. So that's kind of shout out. My second is a good friend of his, JL Murray. Um, he again has, is new to the YouTube world, um, he's in the British Army himself and um, I think it would be again really nice if you could go and show some support or well, their channels will be in the description below. A lot of you have been sent my way via Fabsy as well. So for anyone that has subscribed or is following me because of that then um, thank you. So this video is a bit different to the normal covers but it's on the back of my first video which mentioned that I came from a military family so there was a bit of sort of uncertainty and interest should we say with that video so I thought we'd expand on that and that I would bring mum on just to give a bit of insight and hopefully you'll find it of some value so yeah So question number one is, why did you join? So I come from a military family. Um, my mum was one of seven children. Uh, my granddad was in the army, he was in the intelligence corps. So army life was very ingrained in our family culture. So it just seemed, to me, it just seemed the obvious thing to do. I, I saw that we travelled. I was born in Hong Kong. I always loved going to school in England and saying that I was born in Hong Kong. So, you know, it's a different world. Your brother so was born in Germany. My brother was born in Germany. We lived, you know, here, there and everywhere. I, I, I loved the lifestyle. And that was what I wanted for myself. I always knew I'd marry a soldier <laughs> as well. So it just seemed the obvious thing to do, really. What did your family and friends think about you joining? So I think um, this came from someone who is female, mm. where they're kind of um, almost talked out of it. Yeah. Because well, it's not the norm, is it? No, if you're not from that background. So for yeah. me, no one batted an eyelid, really, because I wanted expected. to join since I was young. So it was just the obvious thing to do, as I said. So um, family and friends were fully supportive. Um, but I think for somebody who comes from a different background, I can imagine that for the families, it's probably quite... Scary. Yeah, no, it? It's quite overwhelming to, because for families who aren't from that culture, I can I can understand why it's quite a frightening thing to do. Yeah. Um, it, it's like us now. Your cousin, she wants to join the police force, and so well, we're all it. behind her. We're all behind her because it's what she wants to do, and we're going to support her in that, and we trust that she'll get a good training. But it's a little bit frightening, isn't it, to think of her in um, you know, dangerous situations. Yeah. So I can understand the family's reserves, but I think uh, hopefully they will support you because if that's what you really want to do, and it, it's about convincing your family that, it, that you have thought it through, you have researched it, it is... I think also, Something you um, really want to like for. some fathers, especially if they haven't come from a military background, might struggle with the idea of their daughters going in. So they're quite happy for like their sons to go in. But in terms of like wanting to protect their daughters, yeah. it can be. It's, I think it's just evident of the, 
people changing times now and yeah yeah what was your experience different to your expectations I can kind of guess what you're gonna say not really because because it was, in the was family. our family culture yeah. so uh, it wasn't I wasn't really phased by you know anything. what you're setting yourself up for in a way don't yeah you? and I think when you or before you join the army I would imagine are probably even better at it now than they were back then but they they pretty much you know make it clear to you what you're letting yourself in for yeah and you get plenty of opportunities to change your mind and turn around and say no this isn't for me yeah. so yeah okay um what age did you join? Back then, it was yeah. for for girls. It was seventeen and three quarters. Oh, okay. Um, but at that point in my life, I was doing other things that I wanted to finish pursuing before I did actually join. So yeah, I was almost twenty by the time I did actually. I think that's there's a process standard. as well. I mean, there was a yeah. process. That we'll was get onto that. At seventeen, I. Um, I trained to become a um, British Telecom telephonist. Yeah. Because I couldn't join at, at 16 after I left school, I decided to train as a British Telecom telephonist because I knew that would stand me in good stead for the military, whatever I did in the military. Although I'd, I think I already knew that I would like to go into the... Royal Corps of Signals yeah. so yeah, it was the obvious thing to do and then when I joined that's what I did I, I became a telephonist in the Royal Corps of Signals yeah what was the best slash worst thing about being in the army um the best thing is or was just the opportunities the opportunities for going to different places. I wanted to see the world and make new friends. <laughs> no, um, yeah, just that whole, there's a community. So coming from a large family with lots of cousins, I was used to community life and that's what you get in the army. So if you want to be a part of a, a big community that works together I, I love what I loved about one of the things that I really loved about the army was the the order and I didn't mind the discipline um, because I like the orderliness you know as a child we went to core days with bands when granddad granddad's yeah. core days um, and there were big bands and everybody's marching in order I loved all that I'm a bit OCD <laughs> um, so yeah and the food and it's interesting colleagues. that you say food because well from my experience the food is typical or the, the food that you get on a barracks is typical sort of canteen food but you're used when we to went to Sandhurst that's how yeah. it was wasn't it um, and, and other camps that I've been on but you were used to the, um, the catering corps the army catering corps the yeah. best the, uh, they were the best of the best, best. Um, and particularly army chefs but yeah. lots has changed so that's one thing that I would say it's probably it's contracted out now isn't it yeah it's all contracted out I think um, what happens now is that most barracks are served by the um, the contractors rather than um, kind of the army catering, the catering corps core. um, so I suppose attention is put towards putting army chefs where they're most needed rather than just serving the barracks that's a shame what was the worst thing about the army yeah you what me? was the worst um in a way it was a bit it's a bit like the same as the best because because you're in barracks with everybody um the worst thing is that you it's quite difficult to just get away and be alone and not have anyone know your business because everybody knows everything especially I was on I was based on relatively small camps at HQ I was at HQ Scotland and HQ Salisbury okay. um, in Broughton so uh, if you're on a small camp with a small a fairly small group of people um, it's great because you you know you have that community, but it's it's also a bit it's probably quite intense. To keep anything private. Yeah. You know, if you 
if you get involved with another soldier it's it's a big decision because you really have to think about you know everyone's going to know everything that's going on really um are you one of those veterans that says back in my day <laughs> no because back then <laughs> back then we didn't say back in the day it wasn't an expression no I, I think more but the no. questions directed like now when you're talking of the past so I think probably the older you get um, and you're looking back at your life and well. especially if the army is your has been your world mm. uh, oh, life changes for everybody whether you're in the military or not so things are very different uh, for our grandparents than they were than they are for young people today. So yeah. I, I think it's just whether or not you're that type of person and I'm not because I'm quite a forward thinking person. I'm always like, well, what's next? And that's another good thing about the army is that it doesn't stand It's not still. stagnant, is it? You, you can move on up yeah. in your career. You can go forward. You can do different things. You can even Every day's know, change different. course. Every day's, yeah. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. As well as the hard work and, you know, the rain and the cold and the hunger, if you're in the middle of yeah. a training exercise in winter, that's not much fun. But, you know, once you get through it, you've got all that camaraderie that you've done this together. That's, that's great. It's nothing better. Yeah. Um, what qualifications did you gain? I got all the qualifications around telephony. Uh, and then there are standard things that we did, like maths and English. And whenever you, like when you went up to, so to start with, your basic, after your basic training, you go to your trade training. So obviously I went to Catterick Bar Barracks because I joined the Royal Corps Signals. Mm -hmm. So you do the maths and English standards around yeah. that. Um, I can't remember what they were called. Just, yeah. Uh, and then... And then my trade, so telephony. And then when I, yeah, you, you progress, you get different, higher levels. So I got all the levels with that. One thing that the army provides you is the opportunity to develop new skills and yes. get yeah. qualifications, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I would say, um, what is also good is that you they can normally sort of transfer into kind of civilian settings can't they oh, yeah when i did come out i got receptionist jobs i had a number of yeah you know, and i could travel i moved around from different places um and was able easily able to get jobs i mean obviously things have changed because telephone exchanges are not the same well, anymore yeah. because of the technologies moved on but then i'm not in that environment no. anymore, so it's not a problem but the army obviously fund a lot of qualifications now so if you wanted to go and do your masters they provide it's that amazing. It's so brilliant. brilliant brilliant you can you can progress without yeah. a doubt if you've got the mindset if it's what you want to do you can yeah. progress Definitely. and adapt if you could you need to be adaptable because sometimes they need you to do whatever. Yeah. Or... On the whole, how was it as a female? Um, and were there any challenges? Um, well, there are always challenges, aren't there? Yeah, Is I think whether you're male, male or female. Um, it's probably changed a lot from my day. There was a, I suppose it, I don't know about now, but it was, you could say it was a misogynistic environment, but that was part of the life and culture back then anyway in the 80s mm. um but it did you still could it didn't stop you no <laughs> I, I i was always quite happy I, you know i was brought up to be feminine and appreciate masculinity so i was always quite happy for the i knew that i would never get sent to the front line yeah. And I was quite happy about that. I, you know, I was quite happy to let the men do that. It depends what kind of female you are, really. I mean, if you want to do that, you can do it now, I think. Can't you? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. all job roles are open to women now. Um, that's even in infantry. I mean, there are obviously debates on 
whether women should be in those roles. I think it's down to the individual. I don't. I think if women are trained, and that's what the army gives you, and if you have the physical strength to do whatever it is you need to do, then why not? Because mentally and um, intellectually, you know, we're all individuals and, and um, it's really down to the right person for the right job, isn't it? And times, times are changing as well. So obviously um, we've got just recently the first woman to... Um, get through P company and things like that so yeah. I think we're being shown that women are not limited no. anymore so a lot of it is about attitudes I suppose yeah. but um, you know, I didn't really find it challenging I was quite happy doing what I was doing um, there was a really nice sense that the boys would look after us we were a team if we were out we, okay so one time we were on exercise we were in um, uh Africa, North Africa, Morocco, thank you, Morocco, and um, so we ended up going into Tangiers and the girls stayed with the boys. Soldiers that we've spoken to, even like officers at Sandhurst, they said that you know each of us brings something to the table yeah. just as individuals yeah so it's all about working as a team and with the girls you know it's yeah. good to, to feel the protection of, of each other you all yeah. take care of each other I mean obviously there are always um, perhaps individual personality clashes that happens in life <laughs> and you have to get over it because you've got to yeah you've got to work for the team yeah well, you're if you're going to work as, yourself, for an individual, you? then you know you're not liked. If you're just going to do your own thing, um, but if you are a team player, you can't go wrong yeah. in the army as a team player. What would your advice be to anyone joining or mm -hmm. interested in joining? I'm not sure that I'm in a position to give advice because things are so different now. But so, then there are basic so things, oh, aren't no, there? So quite thirty years ago. <laughs> anyway. About 25 years ago, um, so, so everything, everything is very different now. Um, I, I think if you're going to apply, you're going to get plenty of advice from all the people that are going to be interviewing you, um, potentially training you. Um, you can, the best thing to do is do your research, talk to current soldiers. I would Get say online. being proactive. Yeah. That's the best thing you can do. And also network. Um, yeah. Look into your trade. So look at different regiments um, and kind of fine tune it down to at least two because then if you don't get your first, then you've always got a backup. Yeah. Um, there are so many more. I wouldn't rely on just one source of information either. So obviously, we've got the internet now. Um, read books, um, speak to as many people as you can, go to events. There's definitely. a couple of books that you, you've read uh, of... So there's Officer and a Gentlewoman yeah. by Eloise, I can't remember her surname, but um, that's a really good book, especially for females wanting to join. Yeah. Um, I know that that's more specifically towards um, officers, yeah. but I think it's kind of standard. It might well put you off, but at least you'll know what you're getting yeah. yourself into. And who was the, what was the other book that you read for females? I think Grandma... I think, uh, okay, the title was Stand Up Straight, and it was... I'll put the link in the description. Then obviously there's um, there's YouTube now. Yeah. Um, Loads of blogs. Documentaries. Watch as m many documentaries as you can. Um, definitely just go to events. Okay. Moving on. Okay. So this question was where you picked up for anything, but you could change it around and say what were you kind of really good at. I think in the army you get picked up for everything all the time that's all part of the training but <laughs> yeah. once you're I, I found the training tough because it's relentless but then once you get through that and you go to your working unit life is different i mean yes you've still got your inspection i think again that's um it's down to mindset isn't it so i think if you obviously everything that you're taught in basic training has a purpose but i think 
um, it's made extra difficult so that whoever's joining is actually in it for the right reason. A lot of it is obviously training you to be disciplined so that yeah. you will do what you're told to do regardless, regardless of your emotional, emotional or your background what you or, think about yeah. that decision because in a battlefield situation that might mean the life or death of yourself or your colleagues um, so it's it's really all about the discipline is there so everything and then what were you was there anything that you well, were you know yeah and no I mean I, I think I was quite a good soldier I just got on with it I did as I was told I worked hard I put all you were my a good effort shot. into it I was quite a good shot yeah I married a soldier who came to stay on our camp when they were um, shooting for Bisley. He actually won uh, Bisley a few years before we met. He was the soldier. So what is Bisley for anyone? Oh, Bisley, um, shooting competition. Yeah. Yeah. Enough uh, said, really. <laughs> okay. okay, that's that. Um, did you travel and where to? <sighs> Well, I went to Scotland, <laughs> and I went to England and Wales, to North Africa, I went to Gibraltar, Germany. Uh, I did go to Germany, I wasn't posted there, but I went to Germany. Yeah. Germany. What did you do there? I visited my future husband, because he was based in Germany mm -hmm. at that time. Um, what else did I do? Where else did I go? You went skiing somewhere, didn't you? Oh yeah, we went to skiing in Sonthofen, somewhere in, I think it's in Bavaria. Yeah, that was good fun, the exercises. There's always, again, like opportunities to do that, isn't there? Yeah. Go swimming, um, anything I went physical. To lots of different places in the UK because, because I was a switchboard operator, telephonist, um, I was often sent out to work in uh, because I was at HQ, HQs, um, I would often get sent to man um, another small tele telephony post for, I don't know, a few days, a few weeks sometimes. I went to Perth, I think, for a few days. So you were in the WRAC, Women's Royal Army Corps. I was in the Royal Army Corps attached, because in those days you, the women were in the WRAC yeah. attached to whatever. Yeah. If I'd have stayed in longer, I would have gone to other places, but I was only in um, just under four years. So if I'd have stayed in, I would have got to... Uh, one of the postings that I would have liked to have gone to was Hong Kong, because I was born there. Yeah. But, yeah, I didn't stay in because I got married, so that didn't happen. Uh, why did you leave? <laughs> I left because I got married. Yeah. To the soldier. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you think about women joining the army. I mean, obviously, you're a woman yourself. Yeah, I think it's obvious, really. Um, I, I don't see the problem with women doing anything, really. No. Nope. You want it? Go for it. Go get, go get it. What challenges did you face coming out? Oh, financially, that was really difficult because, uh, you know, after four years in the army, um, having ready money, everything's paid for, and we... It's that sense of security as well. We then got ourselves a flat, and we had to get ourselves jobs. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it was difficult uh, financially, coming out of the army. Um, maybe also socially to some extent. We found our own little um, community base, because it's really difficult to keep in regular touch with army friends, because they're busy, caught up in the army world. Yeah. Last but not least, have you got any stories? Some juicy stories. <sighs> I've got lots of stories, but I'm not going to tell you one here. <laughs> There's one about chips, but I'm not going to tell you that. Chips and being in... No. Not, not in with the boys. No, 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 no. We're not having that story. <laughs> There we go. Okay.